G'day and welcome to another episode of Perth Property Insider. I'm your host, Jared Mann, and today I'm going into how to grow your portfolio from one property to many. And I've touched on various topics in the last few episodes on how to do this, especially looking at the psychological inner game. In today's episode, I'm going to weave all of these together as a real how-to guide on doing this and fill in some of the gaps so that when someone asks me, Jared, how do I grow a portfolio? I can say, check out episode 99. That's going to be a great one. So let's go inside. Welcome to Perth Property Insider, where you will learn how to grow your wealth and improve your life using Perth Property. Our show is brought to you by Investors Edge Real Estate, the highly rated and award-winning property management specialist servicing the whole of Perth. Now, here is your host, Jared Mann. So, I've got a lot to cover today, but before I get stuck into it, I wanted to mention a prize giveaway that we have going coming up to our 100th episode, which is the next episode now. Been running the show for that long. I really appreciate everyone that tunes in and listens to it. And hopefully I've been helping you with your investing to improve your life. Now, what am I giving away? Well, I'm giving away a fabulous lunch with me. I'm going to pay for everything. We can chat about property, strategy, the market, life. It's going to be an epic lunch to remember. What we have to do to go in the prize draw to win this is to post a review of Perth Property Insider on iTunes or Spotify by the 10th of November and send me a quick email to let me know that you've done it and you'll go into the draw to win this lunch. It'll be for you and your partner if you wish. Post your review and send me an email and to my emails, Jared, J-A-R-R-A-D at investorsedge.com.au. Hope to see what you think of the show on the reviews. So appreciate that. Now let's get stuck into this one. So over my last few episodes, I've been exploring some of the most common things that hold investors back from growing a portfolio from one property, which is often accidental, to having many properties. And we know that over 90% of investors get stuck at less than two properties. So that's why I've been spending so much time, especially on the psychological side of how to do this, because people can often go a lot further. They just set their mind to it. That requires a lot of internal changes. So today, I wanted to fill in some of the gaps and bring it all together so that when uh, I get asked how to do it, went to this episode as a starting point. And I've previously explained the analogy that Robert Kiyosaki mentions in his book, Retire Young, Retire Rich. And that analogy is that wealth is like a glass and you have a certain capacity to hold wealth, just like a glass has capacity to hold water or its content that you put in there. So in order to increase your wealth, you need to increase both your context, which is the size of your glass or your reality, your ability to hold wealth and the content or what you fill up your glass with in order to grow your wealth. So it requires continuously increasing the context and the content. And it certainly applies when it comes to increasing the size of your portfolio. Now, what are the top ways to expand your context or your internal reality in order to grow that portfolio? So you need to start by growing yourself first. And that's what I've been trying to help with in the last few episodes. You need to go from being accidental about all of your decisions, purchasing the investment property on your way home from work that happens to be in the same suburb of where you live, or just randomly buying anywhere because your mates told you to, being a lot more intentional and strategic. It's going to take a lot better decisions to go from just one property to the many that are going to be required for you to have that life-changing wealth. And that's what I really want to help as many people do. And how many properties do you need? Well, that's the next point. You need to start with a very clear strategic plan for your portfolio, and that needs to include its size, the type of properties, the target or goal for your net worth by a certain age, and your passive income by a certain age. You get really clear on those things, 
and you can speak to a financial planner to try to help with that or a property strategist, then that's really going to give you a destination that you can work back from and then deciding what content or properties to fill your portfolio up with becomes a lot easier and almost methodical or mechanical to execute on. The next step to expanding your context is getting crystal clear on your reason why. Why do you want wealth? You've got to get to the point of having an absolute burning desire because otherwise when an obstacle comes up, a challenge comes up, it's just going to be all too hard and you'll go back forgetting about building wealth, thinking that it's just not for you or that you've capped out. The burning desire is what gets you through that obstacle, gets you through that challenge. And I find that when you have the crystal clear plan, that for me really helps with creating the desire because you know where you're heading. So those two work hand in hand together. Next step to expand your context is go from making decisions and doing everything yourself to leveraging the power of a team of professionals. Now, I covered this step in detail in episode 95. So go back and listen to that one if you haven't already on how to build this team and leverage it to the max. The next step to expand your context or internal reality to grow your portfolio is to really look at pushing your comfort zone and when you're coming up against things that aren't comfortable. That's a sign that there's growth in that place for you. Stick with it. Don't run away from it. Don't freeze when you get in this comfortable, uncomfortable spot. Now, we need to overcome these psychological hurdles and you come up against it at various points as you grow. Even I'm continuously facing them today and I'm sure the richest and wealthiest people in the world continue to face their comfort zones no matter where they're at. And I'm on my journey too. Got plenty of fears, plenty of things to come up against. So it's really tackling that subconscious programming. Did speak about it in episode 96. I went into a lot of great stuff on particularly changing how you feel about money. You need to also look at the fear that you have around making mistakes. Yeah, you might have had a, made a few big mistakes. I've made a ton of them. You learn from them, you get over them, get on with the next one. Don't let the past mistakes hold you back. Just get these team of professionals to ensure that you're not going to continue making them and uh, be willing to pay for good help. So listen to my episode on raising your wealth thermostat because this point for me is the most critical of expanding your context and internal reality to be able to grow your portfolio. Final point for this expansion of your context is looking at the long-term compounding of a property, understanding that power and that time in the market and what 10, 20, 30 years can do and how important selection is, even if you get an extra 1% or 2% growth over that period on average per year, going to make all the difference rather than chasing short-term games or doing development because it's sexy, but trading off the location in the area that you're buying in, being worried about that short-term media or, you know, the rising interest rates over the short term or the war in Ukraine. There's always something to be worried about in the short term. Focus on the long term. That's a major difference that wealthy investors have, especially those that have grown a substantial portfolio. Now, covered a lot of context to changing your internal reality there. Now I want to go into a bit of a summary of some of the content to help you decide on the types of properties in your plan and how to execute on growing your portfolio. So you need to start by looking at what your borrowing capacity is and having a financing plan that goes hand in hand along with this property plan. I've covered ways to increase your borrowing capacity in episode 97, where I went through the crucial financing questions and had them answered with Nick Abe. So go back and check that out because property investing is a game of finance with houses thrown in. And if you're going to grow to multiple properties in your portfolio, you need to be playing the game of finance really well. So you need to look at, are you limited by your borrowing capacity? So find that out, see how many properties that's going to potentially allow you to purchase, or are you limited by your deposits that you have, enough money for a deposit? So you'll typically find at one point 
that one of these two is holding you back. You know, so as an example, if you can borrow, say, $1.5 million, but you've only got $100,000 deposit, well, it's going to be the deposit that's limiting you there. So you'd only actually be able to buy 500 grand property with a 20% deposit. And then if you allow for 25%, it's going to mean 400 grand property. So work out what is holding you back. If it's borrowing capacity, you really need to look at ways to increase your income. You might need to look at properties that are more cash flow focused than negatively geared, so higher rental yields. If it's finding your deposits, you need to look at how you can get equity out of your existing properties and play the game of valuing up your properties and getting the best valuations you can because valuers are very different on their pricing that they come back with. So now that prices have come back a fair bit in Perth, many people will be ahead in their pricing, not even realize they could have a deposit just sitting there waiting, especially if you have a few properties already, your home, you would probably be able to pull together a deposit now and be able to get into the market. And that may not be a limiting factor for you, but if you haven't thought about it and haven't looked at how you can maximize those valuations, then you could have a deposit sitting under your nose and not even realize. But if borrowing capacity is the issue, go back to episode 97. Look at ways that you can decrease personal debt. Look at ways to increase your income with your job. Increase your rents on your properties. You know, Really fine-tune this. Look at other banks. Have a broker. Shop it around. Banks have different borrowing capacities. This is critical to being able to expand your portfolio. Next step, do you look at adding value through renovation or development? to accelerate your investing. Is that in your skill set? Do you want to spend the time and effort learning about that in order to execute it well? You can do it with professionals to leverage that time and effort, but you have to be willing to pay for it. And check out episode 87 for a deep dive on how to accelerate your investing with renovation and development. Certainly worth considering if you want to be more aggressive and move things forward at a faster pace. So the next one here is using your equity gains. Now, I touched on it above, but you can look to borrow up to 80% without using lender's mortgage insurance. You can influence your valuations. Any two valuer might come back vastly different. You get an appraisal that supports the higher price, put that back to the valuer. And if you're saving at a slower rate, you may want to consider going up to 90% and paying your lender's mortgage insurance, especially if it's going to take you two years or three years to save that extra 10%, it will be worth paying the lender's mortgage insurance and getting in sooner. So weigh that up against the opportunities in front of you. may also help you get into a more quality suburb at a higher purchase price where you're not going to, you're going to have better chances of compounding growth over the long term. Now, other points to improving the content that goes in your glass to create wealth and grow your portfolio. Work out your cash flow surplus for your household. Put together a household budget. Yeah, it's boring, but gee, you need to be on top of your money. That's a big difference that the wealthy have over those that are just starting out. You need to get a handle on this. And this will impact your choice of property type too, because if you have a strong household surplus and you can readily save, you can afford properties that are more negatively geared and higher priced properties why would you want to buy them? Because they have higher average annual growth rates over the long term. You're going to end up, you know, if you buy a better quality property in a better quality area, it could be as much as a million dollars extra over 30 years on a 500K purchase just for the buying into a better area with 2% higher capital growth. So it makes a massive difference, especially when you buy at higher price points. That gain over that period is going to be even larger when it's compounded out. Now, other steps here to create to improve your content and grow your portfolio is to create a buffer. Now, we're getting into the more of the defensive side here. So I've been more on talking about the offense to gearing up and accelerating your growth with other strategies in there. Now, I'm going to talk about the defense because as you add properties, you have to protect your downside more, don't you? So create a buffer with either equity or cash. When you have more properties, you need to have more buffer around because you're going to have more chance of that thing going wrong. There could be a few things that go wrong at a time. The hot water system blows, you've got a couple of tenants that are vacant, 
heaven forbid the worst happens and your house burns down. That's why you need to have cash flow, so, you know, some equity or cash in reserve for that rainy day. You need to also go from being accidental on your selection of your property to intentional on your suburb area and property selection. So this I covered really in depth in episode 33 on my ideal buying criteria for a top performing property. Go back and listen to it, one of the most popular episodes. And that's going to lay out for you what to look at, what not to accept in terms of negatives, because they can have a real detriment on your rentability and your resale and your overall growth you get. And then the next couple are a lot more defensive based. So look to review your insurances as part of your plan. If you're working with a financial planner, they can help you do that or insurance broker can help you do that. Increase your downside prediction. So you should be looking at definitely having building insurance over everything different, definitely having landlord insurance and then getting them to review, give you input on things like your life insurance, your TPD or total permanent disability, your income protection. All of them should have a role in protecting you for the worst that may happen. Your final one, and by no means last, it's my crucial and preferred thing with us being property management specialists. We know the difference that good property management makes to both giving you leverage on your time and risk reduction and an overall improved return, especially when you multiply that out of multiple properties. Get in touch with us because for a lot of investors, they have poor property management. And when they go to having a number of properties, it all just becomes too hard. Many of them end up selling. They don't grow their portfolio because it's just more headaches for them. And for me, with us in this role, we can help you pull all the other things together in order to grow a really great portfolio that's going to give you the wealth to improve your life. So hopefully you got a lot out of this episode of bringing it all together. We looked at the context and more of the internal, changing that internal reality. Then we looked at the content and how to execute on growing that portfolio. And before I go, just a reminder to go and post us a review. Give me your feedback. Really appreciate you tuning into the show. If you've gotten any value out of it, love to hear. Go to iTunes or Spotify, post us a review, send me a quick email, jared at investorsedge.com.au. You'll go into the draw to win a fabulous lunch with me. And that's going to be an epic lunch. So looking out for your review and thanks for tuning in. Catch ya. On the next one, we've got episode 100. Who knew I was going to make it? (laughs) So thanks for tuning in again. See you then. Bye. Just a reminder that the information discussed in this podcast is general in nature, as we don't know your specific situation. You should always seek professional advice before taking any action. For free market reports on your suburbs of interest and other helpful resources to grow your wealth, make sure you join my property investor update at investorsedge.com.au slash join. And finally, make sure you're a member of our Perth Property Investment Facebook group. To be part of the conversation with other like-minded investors, get help to your questions and get a feel for what's going on out there in the market. I'll see you in the group. Thank you.